Yeah, I mean, so I'm first gen, you know, a Latino that's from SoCal, and I've moved around a lot. But uh, so I've been in LA for 10 years, and it's the longest I've ever lived in one place, and it very much feels like home, um, which is, I think, a, a lot of what attracted me to this this series and this issue is that this is it's a Boyle Heights is a community that's like so proud of their community and where they're from, and that's something that I don't think I ever really had. Uh, Cause um, I like to take, you know, I'd like to talk a lot of shit about Bakersfield because <laughs> it's hot and there's like nothing to do after ten and it's hot, <laughs> like you know. But um, and you know, but because I moved so much, like I don't think I ever felt that. I don't have that. I don't have those deep roots, and I don't think I ever really had that I, that feeling of like this place really truly feels like home, especially because Bakersfield is very divided between the. The, the class and the race, uh, you know, it's very conservative. It's Trump country, you know, um, and Bull Heights is like just so goddamn Chicano and Mexican and like through and through, and it's just so beautiful. And I like loved it because it just it was the first time that I ever went somewhere, and I felt like I was like, holy shit, this place feels like me. And uh, yeah, so I mean, this series is really just kind of a love letter to to that and to the la gente and to to my identity. What does gentrified mean? So gentrified is a term that was coined in Bull Heights. Uh, it's uh, obviously a play on gentrification or gentrified. Um, you know, it's uh, the idea of it being that instead of the outside community uh, or outside developers coming in and buying up everything and displacing everybody, um, the la gente, the people of the community, should be the ones to open new businesses and keep the culture alive. And um, but you know, it still kind of causes some issues. It causes you know, some displacement, and it, there's so there's a lot of division in the community over how best to fight gentrification because everybody wants to like protect you know what they have there um, and also you know not get kicked out of their homes and and so gentified it's it's well that's what that means um, you know and, and we it, it it's such a kind of as an outsider to us it seemed like such a gray area because like for us i see it i'm like everybody's right like you know i understand that conflict in identity that's what identity that's the conflict that i've had my entire life of like not feeling mexican enough or american enough you know like i saw it and i was like oh like that's so crazy that there's business owners that are trying to open up businesses in the, where they're from their home their community um and but there's problems with that and it's just like well shit like if I can't open a, a, a business where I'm from like in my home then where the hell do I belong casting yeah with casting I mean with casting we went to casting and I told my casting director I was like don't show me anybody that isn't Mexican and then you know uh, eventually we had to open that up because it becomes so difficult I realized that there's a lot of great actors out there but you're trying to get the right person for the role like somebody that's gonna really like deliver like the, the, the essence of the role and so you know, there's a few Puerto Ricans in this thing, and like, you know, at first I was like, I really didn't want to do that because like that was one of those things that I hate seeing all the time, and I had to learn like through this that I was just like, oh, like that shit's hard, like it's hard to do that, and like, you know, I want to keep pushing. Uh, now I know I'm like, okay, like I think it needs more time. Like if I want to keep being that like persistent about it, like then it needs more time. Like I didn't realize that uh, how hard that would be. Um, I mean, to be honest, I went into this thinking, I was like, are there even enough Latino actors like for this? Because we have a cast of like 50 different characters. Um, it's a huge, <laughs> for a web series, it was ginormous. Um, like I didn't, Lynn and I didn't stop to think about it, but we, once we counted, we're like, oh, whoops. <laughs> like, oh my God, that's a lot. Like, are we gonna be able to pull this off? And I, you know, before this, I'd only done one other film that starred uh, like a Latina cast, but it was like only five people. And I was worried. I was worried. I was like, is there enough Latino talent out there? And there was. I mean, they show up, man. They, they're out there. And, like, I was like, this process for me taught me, like, it showed me that. I was like, that it showed me that there's so many out there. And I was like, why am I not seeing them? I'm like, oh, it's because they're always being cast on these shows that I don't like to watch because it's just about cartels. And it's about the border, like, like drug deals and, and all of that stuff that I don't like watching because it bugs me because it's just a bunch of stereotypes. And I was like, oh, that's why I don't see them as often, you know, because they're not in the stuff that I like to watch all the time. Um, and, and so it really opened my eyes to just kind of the wealth of talent that's out there. Um, pero también to be able to capture, you know, I think that we did the best with, a, like, I think most of the Puerto Ricans we cast were the younger ones and, the, and the, the older, because we, we wanted to grab, like, get, like, authentic you know, Mexicans from Mexico. I didn't want like Americans putting on fake Mexican accents. And um, that was a lot easier to cast because there's so many great, great Mexican actors uh, out in LA. And um, 
but to find younger Chicanos, like that's something that, I, and I realized I was like, oh, there's not a lot of us in acting because we don't, the art is not something that we chase. Like it's harder for us to go into that. And so that became a challenge, you know, being able to find Chicano actors or being able to find just first gen Mexican Americans or people that felt like, you know, they understood their roots. Um, it was a challenge because, you know, we, we aren't really pushed into, or not pushed into, but supported in going into those arts and so chasing those kind of dreams. Um, so talk about basically, um, well, like a two part, a two part question. So your collaboration with America Ferrera and um, how you got into Sundance. Okay, <clears throat> um, yeah, America, she became involved um, right before we went into production. Um, like basically, she had a meeting with Macro, who was the, the the production company behind this um, and then helped develop the whole project and they told her about Entified and she sounded she was like interested in the, and she read all the scripts and she loved them and she reached out and I you know I wrote her a letter and asked her I'm like can you please be involved in this can you please come on board and like you know I offered her a role um, in, in one of the episodes and um, and she said yes like thank God and <laughs> and so she because she just believed in it and she you know she told she told me that like you know she was just so she felt like it was just so authentic and, and something that like she kind of hadn't really read before and and wanted to be involved and to help us with it however she could and so she came on board as our executive producer you know it was like so like in, in the nick of time um because we were in the middle of production and she finally like confirmed everything and we were able to like get her in on the shoot uh, get her in for the the day of the shoot that she was supposed to be there and um it was a, it was very close, but it finally happened and came through. And and you know she was just such a great collaborator and like going into post like it would have been amazing like if we had been able to like include her for like you know even earlier in the process. But like even even though she came in like right before production, like she was still she contributed so much and helped us really keep it authentic and helped us navigate this from her perspective of being such a professional doing from doing this for so long, you know, and being in this industry for a long time. Um, and it's been such an um, amazing honor to be able to have her really advocating for, you know, me and Linda and our, like, you know, as, as fresh, you know, babies in this industry. And, um, and yeah, and um, getting into Sundance, I mean, Macro has, uh, me and Macro, like, we knew about, like, last year Sundance premiered a film festival, uh, oh, film festival, last year Sundance premiered a web series that, from Refinery29. And we were like, we need to like, be in there next year. Like, we have to make that happen. And, you know, luckily they opened it up this year to short form episodics and uh, we submitted and we got in, you know. So um, it was kind of, uh, yeah, we were, you know, we kept our, we were, we, we had them on our radar knowing that, you know, they were moving into showcasing short form content like this. And it was awesome because I feel like, you know, this is really where, like, this is indie. Like, this is like the indie of it all now, you know. Um, and it's great that they are just, pushing and, and expanding their reach to where the artists are going, 